There's laws of the kingdom that work whether you're saved or not saved. That's why there are people that may go to church, may not go to church. It has nothing to do with their marriage, whether they determine to do it or not. I used to tell people, God doesn't bless Christians. God saves. He saves you. He can save you. I don't mean he blesses you. You're not saved because, or blessed because you're a Christian. You're, you're blessed because you're obedient. Isaiah 1, 19 says, if you're willing and obedient, you eat the good of the land. Job 36, verse 11, if you're obedient, you'll spend your days in prosperity and your years in pleasure. Ephesians chapter 6, if you're obedient, it'll be well with you and you live long on the earth. God blesses obedience. No different than relationships. Nobody wants to hang out with somebody that's mean and rude and crude and lazy and sorry and smelly. There's some sort of benefit there, some sort of mutual benefit in a relationship. So that's what happens when you meet somebody. You get to know somebody, you know, find out what they're like. What do they value? What do they think's important? What are their standards? Is this somebody you like to go with? You know, Amos says this, can two walk together unless they be agreed? You know, well, let's get to know each other. We'll see if we're in agreement or not. It happens that's why people court. They date. They get to know each other. You want to know something about one another. You ask questions. Who are you? Where are you from? What do you believe? Where are you going? What do you want to do? Can we do this together? Most marriages today are what we call soulmate relationships. Soulmate relationships are a relationship where you find somebody and you think, oh, man, I just love being with them. They make me feel so good. They make me laugh, and I feel good about myself, and they build me up. Well, that's great, and that is a gift. But listen to me, somebody that's a great date is not necessarily a great spouse. The same quality might make a fun date, might make a horrible spouse. Because there are certain jobs that a spouse has, according to the Word of God, that you're going to have to do. It doesn't matter where you live, how old you are. It doesn't matter how many times you've been married. These are just things that govern relationships. And so we're going to learn about great relationships today and what they mean. To do this, I want to go back and just give you some things about two are better than one. You know, Genesis chapter 2, verse 18, God said, It's not good for man to be alone. God made it so we would need one another. Males would need females. Females would need males. Now, the devil's really done a great job of trying to bust that up. Men make fun of women. Women make fun of men. And you can't watch a movie or a TV program where there's a great male. They make fun of all men. The devil's gone after the head. Make fun of men. Men are rude and crude and, and selfish and mean and this. And they pass gas. And they don't know how to have manners. And, they don't, and that's what the, the whole media thing's tried to destroy the office of man. Make man look stupid. And men can do incredibly dumb things, but God made man. God made man in his image. God made men stronger than women to protect women and provide for them, not to abuse them and beat them. So that's what sin does. Sin destroys everything. Sin came into the very first family, the first marriage, Adam and Eve. First family, got Cain and Abel. All of a sudden, sin comes into the first family. You know what happened to them? If you read it in Genesis, it said sin came into the first family. They got fired from their job. They got evicted from their house. Their kids started killing each other. Greatest enemy of anybody, sin, not doing what's right. That's why you got to read the Bible. It tells you what's right. It's not a rule. It's just a way to live. Nobody's going to make you do it. God won't make me live right. It's a choice. That's why God said, I set before you life, death, blessing, cursing. You choose. You get to choose how you live. You get to choose who your friends are. But, you know, the Bible's got a lot to say about that. Proverbs 27, 17, is iron strikes iron, so the countenance of a friend. If you have a friend, they will tell you the truth because they don't want you to stay stupid. Proverbs 13, 20 says, if you want to be wise, you better be walking with a wise person, but a companion of a fool will be destroyed. The Bible's full of wisdom and how to live, how to live good, how to live long. If you read the first seven Proverbs, you'll read there, it's in there four times that God wants us to be a happy people. It's God's will we be happy. Do you know that? It's God's will that we live long and that we prosper, but it won't just happen. It comes to obedience to the Word of God and acting right, talking right, doing right, thinking right. Because the Bible says, as a man thinks in his heart, so is he. I don't know how many times in counseling we've had people come up, Joe, why do they act that way? I said, well, they act that way because they think that way. And they think that way because they feed on stuff that feeds that. That's why you've got to guard your heart with all diligence, Proverbs says. For out of it are the issues of life. So that's why people are the way. That's why you've got to get to know them when you date. So let's go to this. Two are better than one. Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 9. Two are better than one. For if one falls, he's got somebody to help him up. But woe to him that is alone when he falls. He doesn't have somebody to help him up. One lies by themselves, you're going to be cold. Two lie together, you're going to have heat. One gets attacked, probably going to get whipped. Two get attacked, you can stand back to back and withstand the attack. And a threefold cord's not quickly broken. Deuteronomy 32, 30, if one can put a thousand to flight, two can put ten thousand to flight. Matthew 18, verse 19, if any two of you shall agree... On anything they ask the Father in heaven, it will be done by him here on earth. 
Two is an incredible number in the kingdom of God. The devil knows that. That's why he's always trying to separate and divide. He does. That's how he conquers, by separation. Jesus, on the other hand, said this in John. He said, Father, make them one together like you and I are one. That's why God talked about marriage. He said, what God has brought together, don't let man put us under. Because there's a great advantage.